Hello, all you flight simmers and air cargo haulers out there. Uh, Commander Kingfish here, and I am back in Air Hauler 2 and Microsoft Flight Simulator. So today, I've got a few things on the list to cover, and uh, we might as well get started here. Wanted to at least first start with company finances. As you can see, we are almost to 14 million and today's goal was to stay above 13 million and we're going to easily do that i've already opened up the factories they've already been paid for uh, i have not been able to find anything on the secondary market as far as new aircraft so we're not going to buy any aircraft and what we're going to do today is open up a new base so we'll be getting to that so first things first uh i've got to deal with uh, my co-pilot here there we go get her off the desk and let's see here all right so we've talked about finances it's at 13 million one of the things i wanted to do today was show you what i do with uh aircraft maintenance so if we get over here to the flight tab and i've got some aircraft that either need repair or need to have b check now i've got if we take a look over here under operations you can see i've got part of my fleet going already that's one of the things i do first thing in the morning come down here check emails and whatnot get onto the pc and open up air hauler and start getting all of my flight crews going so now let's hop back over to fleet and if we look at holly holly had a little bit of an incident and i don't look at these all my pilots are are pretty darn good every once in a while they'll kind of cycle through and have a little bit of, and i look at this as basically just kind of part of maintenance repair so i'm not too worried about any of these pilots here when they have an incident so i made sure that she was back at base one of the bases ksdm and so we're going to click repair and it's going to total repair would have been 5600 but since we are at base we're getting a uh, uh, quite a bit of a discount. So it's only gonna cost us $2,500. So let's carry out the repairs. Let's get that taken care of. Uh, yes. So now she is back at 100%. So again, I'm not too worried about it. The others that have uh, some maintenance. So if we go to Izzy, uh, where's Izzy at right here? Uh, right there, just below Holly. So you can see that she's due for an A check and she's also not far off from a B check. So I am gonna go ahead and do the B check just because if she does the B check out on the, the road uh, at the different airports, then she's gonna be tied up for two or three hours uh, doing that. So by me doing it and I keep track of that, then that saves her quite a bit of time when she's out flying. So let's go ahead and do the B check uh again she is was she at base yeah she's at base as well so that's going to cost us eight hundred dollars it's going to tell us that we still have another two hours but that's okay i want to go ahead and uh take care of that we have plenty of money now uh, so by taking care of it now i don't have to worry about it so let's click mm -hmm. yes and that resets everything so now when she's out flying i don't have to worry about her and I also have Alex, and Alex is right here. She also needed a B check. And it, you, one of the things you'll notice is when you do the B check, it resets the A check as well. And that's same with the C check. When you get to the point of having to do a C check, it will reset your B and your A check at the same time. So let's go ahead and do a B check because uh, she's in the Beechcraft, that's a little more expensive. Of course, we do have her at a base, so I'm not always, I don't always have the luxury of being at a base when I have to do these checks, so I just try to keep an eye on them. So let's go ahead and click that, and so it's, now she's all set. So that takes care of the aircraft maintenance, and so that's one of the things I do in the morning. So now, uh, let's get these, I've already got cargo jobs identified for these so if we go to holly let's see holly is sitting at ksdm 
So if we go to available, and she is going to do actually two. We're going to load her up with two jobs out of here. We're going to uh, accept this one, the frozen prawns. She'll be able to carry both the frozen prawns and the courier docks because she's set at 1,400 pounds for payload. So that will set her. So I think these combined are about uh, 1,290. So let's go ahead and accept this job, the frozen prawns. And then if we go back down to KSDM and uh, we want her to do the courier docks because that's a nice paying job. And we select courier. I could have uh, probably given her this one here because it's going to the same place and it would have been within her but the other one paid more so we're just going to do both of those so let's uh, accept the courier docs yes so now here's where one of the things i do if they're at base or if they're at the airport where they're getting the cargo job and it's in i only do this in the morning usually so what i'll do is assign things out so let's go ahead and load and unload holly's plane so we should have the two jobs here. So let's go ahead and load the courier docks and that leaves 552 pounds. So we can go ahead and load that. So she's got both jobs on her, her plane. So she doesn't have to sit there and load. Uh, and then the other thing too is by doing it this way, sh you can assign the jobs out and then she'll go from KSDM Brownfield there in San Diego to her first job unload there and then fly on to the next one otherwise if you just assign them out she would fly the first job you assigned to her fly back to base get the load and then fly on so this way you're saving a considerable amount of time with her flying so let's go ahead and click ok and then if we go over into the accepted jobs we have the frozen prawns we want to assign that to her first because that's the stop that we want her to make before she goes on to the other job so uh, let's go ahead and assign this to holly there we go and click okay now she'll take off and start flying so now we need to assign the courier docks so we can go ahead and assign the courier docks to her right now as well so let's do that, assign that to Holly. Okay. So now if we go over to operations and we refresh and we go to Holly here, we'll see that she is positioning to KVCV, which is the frozen prawns. And then once she gets done with that, she'll take off and head right on up to zero CN2 to deliver the courier docs. So that's just one way that I do the assignment. All right, so now let's go ahead and do Izzy. Uh, Izzy is setting at, uh, where is she? She is at KLGD, another base. So I've already got a job identified for her. So let's go to KLGD and she's gonna do this building maintenance. So she has 15 hours. She is in a Cirrus, which she has the ability for 1,050 pounds. So this is well, be, she'll be able to handle this. So it's a nice paying job as well. So let's go ahead and accept this job. We'll accept this. We'll do the same thing with her. Uh, let's go in and load her aircraft for her right here. Let's load and we can load that on. And so that's uh, with 12 pounds to spare and we click okay. Go to accepted jobs, the building, that would be this one right here. And we assign this out to Izzy at KLGD, click okay. And if we go back to operations and refresh, she's on her way. 
All right. Now we have Alex, which we did a B check on. And so she has a uh, job that I've identified. She is at 3S8, another base. So there's this really nice artwork job. I found that artwork is paying an awful lot. It's 280 uh, nautical miles. So uh, she can't get it all in one load, but for 105,000, two loads, I'm perfectly happy with her making two loads. So let's go ahead and accept this job. Yes. And let's go to her plane and we will load up as much as we can. So she's got a, we've got her set at 3123. I adjusted a little bit so she could do another load the other day. But typically I look at 3,100 pounds. So let's load and unload for her. We're gonna do a partial load. Again, uh, 3,123 pounds. So let's get her fully loaded. 3,123. There we go, 23, click OK. And so she's loaded. So now let's go ahead and assign this out to Alex. Uh, accepted cargo jobs. Uh, this one right here, this large art one. We're going to assign this to Alex. Click OK. We go over to operations and refresh. You can see that she is on her way. So it'll take her uh, a couple of hours to get there. And so that will, uh, she'll unload, come back, load again. Again, like I said, I only worry about loading when, or just getting started in the morning. So that takes care of those. Now I have two other pilots that I've identified. And that goes along with the other thing that I wanted to cover. I've got some uh, missions that we have been working on. So one of them is with Maya and I've already laid it out. So let's go over to uh, our factories. Actually, I need to open up our factories. And if we go here, You'll see that I have uh, stock and maintenance. You'll see that I have 81 memory sticks. So that's one of the jobs that we ended up doing. And, and I'll kind of point that out when we uh, review the spreadsheet as well. So we need to add or ship stock. So let's go ahead and uh, move this over uh, from uh, the factory to the base. So let's do that. Click OK. Now with the missions, we have to do all the loading ourselves. They won't load. So if we go over to Maya's uh, aircraft, first thing we're gonna do is start by loading uh, Maya up with this uh, mis uh, mission. And then once she ends up getting to where she needs to go, which is KSCK, one of our other bases, then we'll unload that and we'll actually supply that. And you'll get to see that with my other uh, pilot. Uh, we are gonna be supplying some plastics. So let's uh, go ahead and click okay here. Now let's get Maya going. I have a couple of jobs that I've laid out for her. So if we go to available jobs, uh, she is here at uh, El Paso. And so I have her doing this job, uh, El Paso, uh, she's got 19 hours. So this will fit onto her aircraft. So the nice thing about this is that she's gonna be able to do some car a couple of cargo jobs on her way over to Stockton uh, so that uh, we can do that, uh, finish up that mission. So let's go ahead and accept this job. Shoes, so go, yes. And if we go into the accepted jobs, uh, these shoes, we want to actually, no, not yet. We need to load it up. Otherwise she would sit there and load that herself. So let's go to her aircraft and load. And so let's go ahead and load those shoes. So she still has plenty of room to carry that memory sticks up there. So now we can go over 
to accepted cargo jobs and assign this to Maya. And she's right here and click OK. So now she is off and flying, heading to uh, 55AZ, uh, which is Arizona. But I also have identified another job for her. So if we go over here to the jobs board available, she's flying over here to 55AZ right here. Now, I have another job, which is uh, F, let's see, let me find it here. Well, actually, let me do it like this. Let me go down here. It is F70, which is lab equipment. So she's going to be flying over here to 50, uh, 55AZ, and she is going to be delivering that. And once she gets done with there, she's going to fly over here to F70 and pick this job up and then fly on up into KSCK. So let's go ahead. This one we can go ahead and just assign directly. Uh, we're not going to do any loading. So if we click yes and let's click Maya, click OK. Now, so if we go over to Maya and refresh, you'll see that she has the two jobs. Plus, she is carrying the this accepted mission for memory sticks. And so we've got her going. Uh, and we'll get back to these missions. So let's go to the last pilot that is idle, which is Amy. And she actually is carrying uh, 1,332. So now let's go back over to accepted missions. So she's got these 1,332 plastics. And so we're going to go ahead and supply these goods. So let's click supply. It's loaded onto the Cessna where she's sitting at. She flew in last night. So let's click max, uh, 1332. Let's supply the goods, commodities supplied, uh, mission completed. Uh, we're getting paid 1920 and it cost me, I think, over $13 to build it. So let's click OK. And we've accomplished that mission. So now all we have left is the other supply mission for the memory sticks, uh, which is coming out of the other factory. So now I have a job for Amy. Uh, let's go ahead and it is one MT. Uh, where'd you go? Where are you? Oh, did I write it down wrong? Let's see here. Unless I messed up. Oh, it's M. Is it MT86? Oh. It is, it's MT-86. That's my mistake. All right, let's get down to MT-86, which is a load of perfume, which is well within her. She's in a Cessna, 17,000, so that's not bad. So we'll go ahead and just assign that directly to Amy. Assign this, yes. And let's go to Amy. And she's at 97 MT. She'll have to fly over. Uh, let's click OK. Go to operations, refresh. And she is on her way. So all my pilots are now flying. Uh, so that was, uh, that's pretty much what I do first thing in the morning. Getting my cup of coffee, sitting down at the computer, and getting my pilots going. Uh, usually I'll, you know, uh, we'll have those all done and do it all at once. But I saved some of those just so I could show you guys what I do. So that takes care of the aircraft maintenance. And then we've talked about missions. So I kind of showed you what I do on the missions uh, with my AIs. So let's check those off. Uh, so we did, so I, we opened up the factories tab 
So from last episode to this one, I've opened up actually three or four new factories. I opened up another designer clothing factory, which is uh, textiles, clothing. Uh, that's my uh, clothing designer clothing factory. Now, one thing I learned, I had previously opened up the clothing factory and then I didn't do the designer at the same time. I decided I would come back. But once I op uh, added the designer clothing factory, the net shut the clothing factory down as well until the designer clothing was done. So keep in mind when you are setting it up that uh, if you're planning on adding additional ones, if you have the money, you might want to do all of them at the same time. Like, uh, I think I will end up going back and doing tools in KSDM. I might, or I might find another place. But if I do, then that's going to shut my jewelry factory down. So when I opened up my other three factories, plastics, memory sticks, and radios, I did those all at the same time. So it took four days, but I have all three of my factories that are open now in El Paso, which was one of the reasons... I chose El Paso because I had uh, chemicals there that were about as cheap as anywhere in the world. So I could produce plastics, which would be about as cheap as I could produce them anywhere. And then I was able to do two other factories there. I had, uh, it also has electronics there so I can buy my, fairly cheap, so I can buy my chemicals and electronics there to produce my factories. So that makes them a bit more profitable, a lot easier. And then, of course, my cosmetic factories, I opened that up at uh, uh, Flagstaff. And so now I'm just waiting for some uh, uh, jobs to come up to do those. So uh, let me check that off. Check that off that we covered. Uh, no new achievements this last couple of weeks. So uh, nothing to show there. I think the next one will be a base. Uh, achievement uh, which we're going to open up I think you got to get 10 bases to get that achievement and we're going to open up our ninth base today uh, the other thing I wanted to do is just open up the spreadsheet and show you uh, how it's helping me so uh, if we go back here to let's go to our items list so I did some missions for like cigarettes and so what I've done here is highlight the items that are below the midpoint. So which means I can probably find some jobs and still make money with these and not have to worry about going through the stock finder and then flying to a specific airport to buy that. Uh, if I have uh, a, a cigarettes mission that I can pick those up at, and then uh, while my pilots are at one of their bases, I can buy the cigarettes, load that on, and send them off without having to run them out in other places. So that's what the yellow highlight means, is that that particular stock at my bases is under the midpoint. So I can kind of look at that and determine if I want to take a mission. Uh, I added, well, I think I added one more commodity run. I don't know if I showed you this. I was up and delivering shoes and bringing medicines back from Sun Valley to Boise, uh, slowly filling out my mileage chart. I don't know if I'll really use it that much, but I think it's kind of neat. I just kind of got it set up to do the mileages between my bases. Uh, nothing new here at Stockton. Uh, I am eventually going to open up a Haggis factory. It's going to cost me 214 but a lot of the Haggis jobs I've been seeing out there are anywhere from three to four hundred to uh maybe even i think i've even remembered seeing one that was 500 and something so that can be a fairly profitable uh, probably though as soon as i build the base there won't be any more jobs but so be it uh here if we look at our base our jewelry base i've had some jewelry orders as you can see this is the only thing i have here again i might open up tools uh but that's further on down the road uh so we are making some money or we're actually paying slowly paying for the base so we're down to uh we've about paid for half the base so it was two hundred thousand, 
to open up the factory. I say base, it's factories, what we're talking about here. Uh, 200,000 to open up the jewelry factory. And so with the missions that we've done, uh, we've brought this down to 60,000. So we don't need too many more missions to get this base fully paid for, and then it'll actually start making money for us. So, uh, oh, what do we got? We got a error here. Uh, let me see something. Uh, B. Well, I'll have to come back and fix that because I made the mistake last time of hitting F2. And so I need to... Uh, not sure why that's showing a minus. I put something in wrong. Because it shouldn't have cost me... Oh, uh, maybe it does. Maybe I put that in wrong. It shouldn't have cost me. I try not to take any jobs. It's going to cost me money. So let's see here. So that's that. Uh, Flagstaff, we, I put the cosmetics factory in. And I haven't done anything there. Uh, those orders dried up as soon as I put the factory in, which kind of goes to figure. Uh, same with the designer clothing. Uh, my clothing, I have gotten some jobs here and we've actually done pretty good on the clothing uh so we've brought that base down from 60,000 down to 41,000 so eventually these are going to all end up paying for themselves and i think that's everything i wanted to review on the spreadsheet and i think the last thing now is to fly up to alamosa so let me minimize this spreadsheet and we're going to go over here to our fleet uh, I actually already have the flight plan set up in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but uh, I need to get it set up here. So if we go to here and we, so we want to fly this aircraft. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, I take that back. There's one more thing I wanted to. Actually, no, I'm not going to mess with it because it's so very little. I could do a commodities run from santa fe up uh, i had a pretty good commodities run from el paso up to santa fe but i don't there's not much going into alamosa from santa fe so i think there was one that i could do for i make a dollar a pound so not going to mess with that so we want to go from santa fe up to k-a-l-s San Luis Alamosa. So we're going to use selected. Uh, we're not going to load anything. Uh, we're going to just make sure we have plenty of fuel. So let's put about, uh, uh, we'll put about 300 pounds in there. That's going to be way more than enough, which is fine. That way I have it on board. 300 pounds. Okay. And. We're going to fly from there to there. Again, we're going to accept this. I don't worry about the flight plan because it does not transfer over. So let's click accept route and fly. All right, so again, I already have the flight set up in Flight Simulator. So I am going to go ahead and hop over and I will see you in the cockpit when the when I am ready to take off okay I think I have everything ready to go here I've already set my altitude uh, we're gonna fly up to 9,000 foot and we're already fairly high here at uh, Santa Fe uh, but that uh, gives us plenty of clearance to get up to Alamosa which also is fairly high I think it is uh, uh, I'll have to take a look at the knee board here and see it while we're in flight but i think it's somewhere around seven thousand feet if i remember correctly something like that so uh we are uh, got a quick custom here uh, just kind of fly straight out and then we're going to turn and head for this airport uh fly uh, over taos and then hit a couple of more it shouldn't take us much more than uh, uh according to the flight log about 45 minutes but probably take us about 40, 35, 40 minutes to get up there. 
All right, let me minimize this. Uh, if we roll back, you can kind of see our flight. We're kind of going up through here and we're uh, kind of missing all of these hills. So let me go ahead and minimize this. All right, so altitude set. Uh, I've already set uh, checked the weights. The fuel is transferred over and we should be ready to go. Uh, let me roll back here a little bit, adjust, and let's uh, rev up. Okay, release the brake. We're on a fairly long runway here, so I'm uh, not too worried about uh, the elevation. And we'd be able to take off here pretty quick. You can see the difference in with the elevation, how much longer it takes to take off, and then we should be able to lift off right here. And let's raise our landing gear. And let's go ahead and set our autopilot. Navigation, gauge, or arm. And we are off and flying. So if we zero in here, uh, we can see that it uh, is saying an hour. Raise that flap. But once we get up to elevation, that will uh, speed up considerably. Uh, and we're about ready to make our first turn. So I am actually going to go ahead and... Uh, fly this on up. I'm going to kind of kick back and let you guys enjoy the flight on the way up. Hopefully we didn't uh, mess up here, but I'm pretty sure I've got this. It should turn quite a bit more here so that we're clearing that. We should be flying up this valley right here. Okay, I'm going to uh, kick back and let you guys enjoy the scenery on the way up such as it is in New Mexico and the southern portion of Colorado.
are getting close to Alamosa. Matter of fact, those uh, lights right there, that is our uh, airport. And so uh, I am going to take over, turn our autopilot off, navigation, and so that we can start getting lined up. The airport is at uh, 7,500 foot elevation. So I came down in altitude down to 8,300. And so that we can kind of get uh, set and lined up. Put another flap out. And uh, we're almost there. We're about four and a half miles out. I always uh, put my landing gear out around two and a half miles out. That helps uh, with the speed of the aircraft. And it's always good to have the uh, 
landing gear down. 500. Okay, and we're pretty well lined up. I've been in and out of this airport a while, not in real life, but flying. Uh, when I was doing another air hauler playthrough, and it's not a bad airport. And actually, I also wanted to mention, I don't know if you remember seeing that uh, river that we followed for a ways up, into, up into Taos. That's the Rio Grande. It originates up here in Colorado and flows down through New Mexico and ends up along the uh, Texas-Mexico border and flows into the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Okay, I guess I better start paying attention here. One hundred. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. And there we go. We're on the ground. They're slowing this thing down. We uh, we'll take the next turn out taxiway. And pull the flaps up. Okay, we're going to take this taxiway right here. Follow it right over to parking. This will uh, make a nice little base. Now, the reason I chose Alamosa, it, and I'll show you on the maps when we get back over into Air Hauler, uh, it is pretty much strategically uh, located uh, from Flagstaff and from uh, El Paso. So my uh, pilots can do base runs between there and then it's kind of strategically located for my next base, which will probably be uh, up in Wyoming. I'm not sure, I'm probably looking at Cheyenne or something like that to start uh, cons uh, filling out along the Rocky Mountains here. All right, let's get uh, pulled in here. And we're not going to pull into any particular spot. We're just going to get uh, uh, pulled in over here. Uh, this uh, These buildings look nice to consider them our warehouses. So let's just kind of pull in right here and park right here okay we're here at Alamosa so set the brake cut the fuel and I will see you back over in air hauler and we'll kind of close things up here 
Okay, I am over here in Air Hauler. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, close out this flight. Uh, we don't have anything to unload, so we'll click OK. Uh, we'll finish our flight monitoring results. We had a nice, uh, smooth landing. And so we can click OK, finish flight monitoring. And we are here. So let me do one more thing. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's, uh, we want to open up a base here and I can just kind of show you on the cargo jobs. Why? Let's scroll over here. Let's refresh this map. So we are here in Alamosa. Uh, here is uh, El Paso, and here is Flagstaff, and so another airport uh, up here in, uh, I'm thinking Cheyenne will be about right, which will be not too bad of location. We're also not too bad from Pocatello. So I think it's a pretty good uh, uh, location for a base, and then... Uh, Ultimately, uh, we're, we'll maybe look at Cheyenne and then maybe Billings, and then that will give us pretty good coverage. The only other place I may need to put a base in the U.S. anyway, and I may actually look at Canada for our first base up there, somewhere in there, which would fit uh, geographically because we've got uh, Le Grand right here. So let's get to opening up this base. Uh, company information, bases, and we want to open a base. And our only option is, because I'm the only one that's at a base right now or at an airport. So this is the one we want to open up. Let's uh, select. It's going to cost us 220000 Well, if you remember, we've got that one uh, art work that we're delivering that's 105,000 right there so that's practically uh, that's halfway or almost halfway of having this base paid for so we are not going to really lose much in the way of our uh, uh, built up uh, cash reserve so let's click yes and it is started okay so let's get back over here to company finances we can see that we've only dropped to 13 Seven. So the goal was to stay above uh, 13 million this uh, by this episode, and we're easily going to do that. So just a note, uh, I think that's about it. That was everything we wanted to cover today. So just a note, I will be going on summer vacation coming here uh, at the end of the month. And so I will only have one more air hauler episode here in uh, in the spring but don't worry uh, once I am back from summer vacation and in the fall I will start uh, putting more uh, air hauler episodes out uh, we'll kind of see how that compares to once my last episode here at the end of May uh, looks compared to when we start up again I'm figuring it out that uh, my monthly overhead is going to be somewhere around 350,000 so that's going to be about a million dollars that I'll be spending idle which uh, won't be too bad but we'll talk about all of that in the in the last episode uh, for the spring uh, let's see I think that was everything I wanted to cover today so uh, all you uh, flight simmers and air haulers out there uh, keep those smooth landings coming and actually, I'm out of sync here. Let me start this all over again. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. It really helps the video out a lot. And please subscribe. That'll really help the channel. Ring that bell. It'll let you know when I am uh, uploading new videos. And I'm doing that on a week regular basis. Okay, all you uh, flight simmers out there, keep those smooth landings coming. And with that, Commander Kingfish is out of here. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.